much um, sort of um, um, available for you to um, share, for you to sort of revisit. And um, um, the blog also has a lot of um, other interesting topics, all our past webinars and workshops that you can browse through. And uh, without much um, you know, further ado, I'm going to introduce Najia. Najia is the founder of Sustainable Narrative. Um, Sustainable Narrative is a platform that is bringing together a business community which has um, sustainable goals in mind. And um, Sustainable Narrative um, also sort of conceptualizes and um, um, consults on various sustainable solutions for multiple businesses. So Najia, um, I think I'd leave it to you to sort of introduce yourself, tell us a little bit, bit more about your journey and take forward the workshop. Thank you so much for the introduction and thank you so much everyone for joining in for today's session. Um, I'd like to give a little more introduction about myself. I'm a designer, a sustainability consultant, and of course a fan of Sustainable Narrative. Uh, we've been quite lucky and we've been in this region for the past seven and a half years, um, working with different incubators, designers, startups, as well as think tanks to work on providing sustainable as well as green solutions. Um, I've been quite lucky, as I'll be honest, but a slowing graduate, we're working on building the sustainable community um, in terms of doing so many, so many collaborations and partnerships. Uh, and we've been quite lucky to do that today with Shift Eco as well. Um, so I'm quickly going to brief you about the session. We're going to, uh, should we wait for more people to join in or is that okay? I think you can get started and... Um, okay, we can just join in halfway through if it's, that's okay. They can always watch the recording for the part that they've missed. Perfect. Okay, so in this session, we'll be touching based on what exactly is sustainability, what are the elements that you need to take in consideration if you're somebody who's new to the industry or is somebody who's already in, in this industry as a designer, brand, um, startup. Also, we'll be touching base on very sustainable practices that you could incorporate in your own business while at the same time touching a bit on the SDGs. Don't worry, we're gonna go through each and everything slowly and gradually. So let me share my screen and let's just get started. Okay, so firstly, for anybody who's new to this, about the fact that what exactly is sustainability. Sustainability is often defined as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation. So here we are thinking about the long-term plan and not the short-term plan, which majority of the businesses are like, oh, we have started a certain business. It's all about making profit. But no, it's more about the cause. Um, what exactly does your business stands for? so that you can move from one step to another. The new normal has bring us with the urge for more collaboration and partnerships that we're doing today as well. As a result, businesses needs to more evolve in the way of the thinking in terms of concept development, especially in times of COVID-19. We have seen so many businesses being impacted, a uh, few of them being shut down because of one reason or another. But I feel like it's something that each and every business needs to think from the very start. That is about the process of creating a product from that to adopting life cycle solutions, which could help you to move forward, not only in the short run, but also in the long run. So I think since the entire um, event, followed up last year um, in terms of COVID, in terms of how things were, there has been a rise of sustainability um, and a build on sustainable community in terms of the products that are designed, sourced even services that are provided with the intention um, that are circulated responsibility in terms of touching base and concepts of closing loop and coming up with circular design theory. We're gonna to touch base on that later as well, no worries. 
starting initially from designing on a piece about how much longevity or the timelessness it has onto the material. And then, then again, thinking about the long-term plan in terms of preparing, redesigning and recycling product. An eff efficient way how the society works, especially the sustainable society, and I'm really proud to be a part of it as well, in terms of looking out in possibilities and valuing products that they should return safely to the biosphere when no longer in the human use. So here we are taking in consideration about the concept of sustainability, about the production process, as well as what exactly is going to happen to the product after it's going to be used. So we need to, it's like a major thing and it's quite obvious in terms of reducing our negative impacts and replacing them with the positive ones. And this can only happen if you work together. I love the fact that government has so many initiatives and strategies coming up, as well as the private sectors um, in terms of coming up with new green, um, uh, um, green regulations, as well as res uh, legislations. They can work together in one way or another. Um, and I love the fact we're also working with new clients coming in who are about, oh, okay, we had this business and this happened um, over the past year because of the pandemic, of course. So we want to rework on our business model in terms of starting from the initial concept about making um, the product, about the idea, and how exactly can we market it in this competitive market that we have in Dubai, where there's a lot of competition. Uh, but I love the fact that sustainable community is all about um, connecting with each other, building on that sense of community that's absolutely essential, not only uh, just to make profits or just um, you know, move forward in the industry, but also to work on the aspect of networking, um, have those like-minded uh, like people who could help you out in so many different ways. Um, and that's why I always recommend and what we're doing as Sustainable Narrative as well, helping individuals um, in terms of their business model, in terms of their idea about sustainability and how exactly can they be part of the sustainable community itself. Then moving towards a basic introduction to sustainable design and trends within the MENA region as well as globally. Firstly, sustainable design is often, uh, you know, just stated as clean, eco-friendly, eco-conscious, organic, just to name a few. But there's a more story behind it. We need to take an account of the cultural factors, the environmental factors, and the financial factors. We're going to touch base on these factors later on as well. Uh, from project ideation and completion internationally or locally, uh, MENA designers and brands, you know, they have to incorporate this very important three Ps that are people, profit, and planet. I would highly recommend to screenshot this slide because it's so important for anybody who wants to be a part of the sustainable community or this industry and wants to tap in. These are the three key words that you have to take in account for um, starting up your business or moving forward with your business in the future. So here are the three factors. They're also known as three Bs, the social factor, the environmental factor, and the economic factor. When we talk about the social factor, we have to take an account of the people who are involved in the process. The employees that you're working with, the sustainable community that you need to be part of it, Moving towards the economic factor, that's more about profit making. Of course, in the end, each and every business needs to make profit to move forward. Um, so this is very important, not only for you as, or individually as with your own business, but even to run the economy in a very sustainable way. We have to take an account of the economic developments. Third, factor is the environmental factor. So for um, sustainable narrative, we have been quite successful in terms of cutting down on carbon emission and um, 
other environmental factors because this year we decided to do completely online. Um, that could further touch base on biodiversity, um, greenhouse gases, um, carbon emissions, climate change, so many aspects. We need to just be conscious and look around how things are going um, and make those wise and smart choices um, effectively. Now coming towards focusing on circular design, what is a circular design? The circular design theory or the concept works around closing the loop. That is the zero waste concept. So here is something that so many businesses internationally and locally are doing um, in terms of coming up with new techniques to achieve uh, sustainable benchmarks for design practices. Uh, we've been quite lucky for, for doing that with so many businesses here um, and internationally there is a huge market um, and that's how the economy works in a very circular and efficient way. Um, being at the forefront of exploration, that is Dubai has been a hub of technology um, and they're keeping a balance between technology as well as nature. Um, if you haven't checked out the Expo 2020 Sustainable Pavilion, I would highly recommend you to go and check it out for you, not only as a business but as an individual to educate yourself in terms of making those sustainable everyday choices in terms of cutting down on plastic, in terms of uh, making effective choices for switching to organic products. Um, and even I myself have been somebody who has been part of the fashion industry for so long. It's very important to educate yourself and the people around you in terms of being aware of what exactly is going on in the industry. So this is something that needs to be taken in account at every stage of the project or a, a certain business that you're working around. So moving on to designing for sustainability, that's what our session is all about. What are the challenges? Um, you know, being a sustainability consultant, this is the question that everybody asks. This is the first question, um, <laughs> to be more specific. Um, I think the conscious decision, firstly, uh, on how, where, when, and who will produce the product is so important. That could solve so many things. Firstly, where, if you're a brand or a business, you need to be specific and transparent about where exactly is your product being produced and educate the customer on that as well. Secondly, how, what is the process um, in terms of the production? Be open about it. Thirdly, when, the timeline. The timeline is so essential in terms of um, not only getting those profits out there, but you know, setting those deadlines and be um, you know, specific about it. Oh, okay, this is what I want to achieve in six months or maybe in one year. That would really help you out in order to structure and format your entire business. And then who will produce the product or the service that's given out? It's so important because majority of people kind of miss out on this uh, factor about the people who are involved in the production process. Um, it could be anyone, but you need to be transparent about, oh, okay, this is our business. These people are the members or the employees of the certain um, initiative or business that you've started up and be transparent about this is what we are doing and educating the customer about it at the same time. So the challenge then again is not to fall into producing a sustainable product that is 100% sustainable product, which so many, it's so funny because whenever there's a brand that's approaching at our designer, they're like, oh, that's our first aim to be 100% sustainable. That's not even possible. Um, nobody can be 100% sustainable. You can pick out those elements to be sustainable in terms of production, in terms of material that you guys are using. There's so many possibilities, but just not to restrict yourself to that certain word or certain concept about being 100% or being truly sustainable. 
Um, so the concept of a sustainable product is misguiding. I mean, I'll be honest, because the impact of any product has on social and economical um, or and even environmental factors depends not only on the manufacturing of the product, but also on its use. How exactly are you going to use the product? The customer needs to be provided step by step information maybe they have a certain product and the certain probably like two years or three years later they'll be like oh okay what should we do with this product we don't want to use it so come up with innovation innovative ideas come up with interesting elements that they could do maybe they could recycle that specific um for example shirt they have and after three years they're like oh this is no longer in trend or this is something that i feel like i don't want to wear it anymore so maybe you know provide them if your business or brand it's a plain white t-shirt maybe give them options about oh you could uh, give it back to us maybe we could have embroidery elements added to it and maybe we can cost for that or maybe we can tie and dye or have some kind of print to it so that that customer would be more interested about oh okay this is a product that's how i can just evolve and revolve around the concept of sustainability and stick to it through and through so moving on now um the design must incorporate sustainable principle in order to work within the natural world therefore sustainable design focuses on efficiency and effective solutions the green ones to be more specific that is better for the society for the environment and for your business a successful sustainable design follows criteria that's very defined and careful in terms of responding to the customer the, the, that is also the user the people the market the company or the brand itself the environment the culture there's so many brands coming up who are not taking into account the aspect of culture and being true to who they are and the market they're catering to. There's a lot of greenwashing being done as well. I'm going to touch base on what exactly is greenwashing and how can you avoid them further. So uh, being careful about the material being used, being careful about the target audience, um, it has to be cultural appropriate, the environmental aspects, and you have to take an account of all those things slowly and gradually and be um, really careful and mindful about each and everything. You can't just start a sustainable business or a brand one fine day. There's a lot of thought process that needs to be done, starting from writing down that initial idea on a piece of paper. What exactly do you need to do? Do a lot of research on that as well. Get in touch with the people who are already part of the sustainable community so that they can guide you further. Um, and so many said, I also um, and always recommend for anybody starting out to get in touch with an expert. They know how to do which thing at a specific time. They're, they're kind of being, um, I'll be honest, because they're kind of like really helpful in terms of um, building the concept and as well as what exactly you want to do. It might cost a little more, but it's going to be worth it at the end. So moving towards a sustainable chic and how the industry is going green. I love the fact that Dubai is taking those tiny steps uh, little steps day by day to move towards sustainable community. I love the fact that the community is growing as well. There's so many collaborations and partnerships that are being done along those lines um, in the service sector as well, in the product making sector as well. So sustainable design means, what exactly does it mean to being, you know, having those elements of doing something different, uh, being ethical at it, having a personal touch to it, taking account of the social aspect to it and compromising the whole of it. These are the four basic steps for anybody, any business starting out. Firstly, the choice of raw material. So it is so important to provide the sourcing of the raw material. How exactly is the product being made? That is the second point. That is the manufacturing process. Um, There's so many businesses out there that are like, oh, we are making a certain product in a developing country but there's a huge question mark about 
how exactly are they making? Who are the people involved in the process? That is marketing and distribution of finished products. Okay, they're maybe producing back at home and they're marketing it here in Dubai and distributing the product. But be honest and be transparent. I always tell each and every business to do that. Um, there's no point of you know coming up to us. We've been quite uh you know surprisingly shocked we were because there were few, few business they were like oh we have a sustainable product and we want to trace back to each and every information in detail they weren't sustainable and they were like oh, okay but we want you to market in sustainable way and that's something uh personally as well as I'm somebody who's running a business and focusing towards the core value for seven years so I, I'm sorry, but I cannot support you in doing something along those lines. How about you start from the initial process of rebranding your entire business and maybe we can work around possibilities about making firstly your product sustainable and then touching base on bits and pieces. Um, and maybe we can work around so many possibilities and your product can, and your brand could be actually sustainable. Fourthly is the consumer use and the final disposal. Okay, so if you're a designer, if you're a brand or a business startup or a design hub, everybody kind of miss out on this element. The fourth one, that is the role of the consumer. The consumer has the initial power to make the decision, the right decision, to buy a sustainable product and not opt out for something that's not sustainable. But that could be only possible if the consumer is educated. Um, individually, what you can do is do a lot of free research, read up on so many things. There's so many articles out there that could educate you. If you are interested in certain business or brand, ask them direct questions about Oh, okay. Can you please provide me about how exactly this product is being made? What are the materials being used? Okay, this is a certain price bracket for the product. Can you just justify that in terms of the process that it could be the initial process, the concept building, or even in any sector that you had, it does not have to be fashion. It could be, um, so many design industries that you can tap in, be directly one-to-one. -one. I love the fact that social media is playing a major role. Whenever um, a sustainable product comes out, uh, I don't know whether if much of you have tapped into uh, those amazing initiatives done by Slow Fashion Movement, Remake, how they're just touching base, coming up with campaigns with which they in which they have so many customers participants being involved asking questions about okay H&M for example is coming up with a sustainable collection or Mango is coming up with a sustainable uh, collection they're asking so many questions about okay you claim to be sustainable despite the fact you're in a high street brand uh, so me as a customer or as um, a consumer I need to ask the following questions and then comes uh, the awkward moment about, oh, okay, them marketing their product in a very sustainable and ethical way, which drastically is not. That's an, another debate. I think we can go on and on with that. Moving on towards circle design process, um, that could be absolutely essential for a designer, brand, business, Please take a screenshot of the slide. This could help you. It's still helping me seven years down the lane uh, whenever I'm working with any client. Firstly, is to understand, that is to get to know the user and the system and the market that you are into. Secondly, is defining, putting in words the design, the challenge and your intention as a designer, as a brand, as an incubator or a design hub about what exactly do you need to do and why exactly do you need to do. That could be your personal preference as well, or that could be because of the things around you are kind of slowly and gradually moving towards a certain direction. That is, uh, there has been a rise in sustainable movement, as I mentioned before, and I completely agree to that. Thirdly, is to make, is to design, if you're a designer, if you're outsourcing a certain product or list of products, do your research uh, in terms of that, create a prototype in terms of packing, in terms of so many other logistics that you have to 
taking into account before actually releasing the certain product or certain service that you were doing. Um, so for that, I mean, you have to do a lot of research, get in touch with the experts, try to connect with people in the community already. That could be so much helpful. You have no idea um, in regard to that. Um, so when you've kind of like touched base on all the initial factors, you can be like, oh, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go in the market and you know, try out a certain product or certain service that I am providing. And then again, being very open and transparent about the initial process, your concept building, who you are as an individual in terms of personal branding, that could work wonders for you if you're somebody who knows how to market yourself as an individual, I mean, you don't have to worry anything. I mean, you could run a very successful business in a short time as well as in a long run. So here are a few brands, um, the international ones that we can always gain inspiration from and not just the inspiration, not try to copy in terms of what exactly they're doing with so many local brands and designers are trying to work around the same business model, same idea, same concept, even producing the same product. So there comes a huge gap in terms of, you know, where exactly does your creativity, your efforts and your hard work lie. So you need to be very, um, you know, really, really be, you know, conscious and uh, be very, um, aware of what exactly you're doing in the market because sooner or later like i mentioned before the social media is a hub of creativity but try to stand out create your own uh persona in terms of the brand you are planning to start up or the brand that you already have in terms of marketing in terms of product creation in terms of being sustainable uh in one way or another. So here are a few examples that I would like to share. Uh, we have Matt and Nat. Um, so they are pro a, a product making and accessory making brand. So they kind of ensure ethical practice or motion in their factories by providing BTS um, videos and pictures, justifying that on their website in one way or another. Then we have great, um, the great beyond that are ethically sourced, it's organic bamboo fabric. Um, then you have Reformations, quite famous, that takes an account of the eco-friendly approach to fashion, making sustainable, really uh, trend, really cool and on point. These are just a few fashion brands, but there's so many brands, I mean, internationally as well, um, who are working around changing their business models and keeping account of so many other elements that you can also get inspired and add it to your element, but just don't just copy. That's another um, aspect to, of it altogether. So it is important then again to understand the consumer needs and wants are addressed fully. Um, there's no point of producing products or sourcing products and coming out with a business where there is no demand for it. There needs to be a market demand a gap that needs to be filled that's when you need to think about product it can work in two ways firstly as a brand designer you can create a demand for certain product or figure out if there's a gap in the market and maybe you can contribute to that market in so many different ways uh, in terms of providing service in terms of providing products um, that could be very essential and important in the sustainable community or any industry that you are in especially uh, the design industry, where I feel like there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And there's so many uh, brands, designers coming up with innovation techniques, um, sustainable ethical solutions uh, that could be, that, that is actually helping the community and this uh, industry in so many different ways. Now, coming towards uh, the aspect of greenwashing, that is the misleading information that so many businesses um, are doing here in Dubai as well, I'll be honest. So for that, the customer has to play a major role. We need to educate the customer about what exactly are they purchasing, not only based on the certain trend they have, the taste they have, 
output the product that they're going to consume, whether they could use it in long run. Um, that could be for each and every product, every day to life products. Um, th there's a huge variety in list that I can write it down in terms of that. But into which really what you can do is ask questions, especially to the local business starting up who are very true to what they're doing and they're providing details at each and every step. And I would like to mention Shift Eco is doing an incredible job in doing that as well in terms of providing so uh, much education and um, information to the customer, not only in terms of product, but also doing such similar workshops that could be um, you know, helpful for any individual. For example, anyone attending today, maybe they could go back to it and be like, oh, okay, this is the decision as an individual I need to make uh, today. Because whenever we're talking about sustainability, it's just not about those businesses or those brands making those big changes. It, it is about those individuals making those tiny, small steps and changes in everyday lives that could actually bring a huge um, impact maybe to the industry you're making. Maybe if you stop um, investing in uh, plastic straws, for example, that started out, uh, there was so much awareness regarding it. And I've seen so many businesses here, especially restaurants here in Dubai, who have stopped using plastic straws. And they're either providing the option of paper straws that could be recycled, or maybe they go like, oh, we don't have plastic straws here. We're cutting down on them. And in this way, they're kind of like making a statement in terms of taking those basic initial step, but that step needs to come from the consumer um, as a whole. So referring directly to the customer and enabling them um, in terms of so many active initiatives and campaigns that are coming up, not only in terms of design process, even after the product has been produced in terms of marketing, that could work out wonders in, in so many different ways not only profitable for individual, but for business, even for running a certain economy in a certain way. Um, a holistic approach to the impacts of the current industry where necessary knowledge is advised with the usage of eco-material, eco-efficiency in product and ethical making. This is what I also touch base on the last slide. And I've been touching base on these key elements of eco-material, eco-efficiency, ethical manufacturing and production and putting your product out there. The customer relationship with the product or the service in context of sustainable development and finding new ways to create innovation, uh, impactful options towards a sustainable future. There's so many um, exhibitions, so many initiatives, even at the government level. Um, I mean, if you're somebody who is really keen in innovation in uh, touching base on what exactly is going around in the industry. I would highly recommend to check out um, the Dubai Design Week that we have in October, November. We were quite lucky to be a part of that last year as well. We have the Fashion Forward event as well, where they have been touching base on green room talks and sustainable talks, um, as well as having sustainable brands on board. Uh, we also have Art Dubai going on right now, and there's so many um, artists coming together in terms of creating products out of like recycled materials and you know, touching base on the fact that why exactly do we need sustainability in this industry and currently right now. Moving on and wrapping up the entire presentation, I'll touch base again on the a factor that design itself, the concept itself is the key to this process because we need to be mindful about the decisions we're making, taking consideration of the environmental effect, the social effect and the economic effect. They need to go side by side. They are also known as three Bs, but for, this is going to, I'm going to just touch base on the element of sustainable development goals as well, because majority of people are not aware um, of them. So this could be the essential and key factor for anybody who has no idea how sustainability works around, how could you 
be a part of it, the first thing that you need to do is tap into SDGs. Um, SDGs are also known as the Sustainable Development Goals or Global Goals. They were stated by UN 2015. They tend to be achieved by 2030. We have nine years to go. That's pretty less, I know. But um, I love the fact there's so many businesses coming and countries coming together as well to work towards them. There's 17 in total. And they were stated in replacement to the MDGs, uh, which was the start of the global effort in 2000 to tackle so many factors which the economy of the country needs to take in account. Here are 17 in total. Uh, screenshot the slide, that would be really helpful for you. I'll quickly just touch base on all of them. Being a part of the design industry, we basically touch base on the number 12, that is responsible consumption production. Um, so for that, I mean, there are other factors that do take into account, but this is basically what the design industry is all about. Not being responsible in terms of consumption. I'm not talking about sustainable community, which is very, uh, you know, conscious about the decisions, but the industry as a whole, in terms of production, in terms of consumption, there's a lot of waste. Um, hardly anything is being recycled. Um, and the government is kind of like, you know, coming in to provide solutions for them and working along those possibilities. But we have a long way to go. We need to see things through black and white and be honest and transparent about the entire process so that more and more people be like, oh, okay, this is the work that still needs to be done. We can come together and work on these falling possibilities. So I'll quickly brief uh, them all together. Firstly, talks about no poverty and zero hunger. Secondly, uh, especially in developing countries. Third, good health and well-being of the society is so important. Uh, number four is quality education. Uh, that could be linked up with the gender equality in a way because um, especially in developing countries, um, there, it, there isn't an equality in terms of education being provided. The girls, um, you know, even in the initial stages, they're kind of you know, not being educated, the factor of going to school, uh, the elements of educating them, it's something that's kind of like uh, secondary, unfortunately. Um, then clean water and sanitation, number seven is affordable and clean energy. Number eight is decent work and economic growth, uh, you know, to uh, make successful businesses run in the long run, not only in the short term. Ninth is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Tenth is reducing inequality. That could be linked up with gender equality. Number fifth, eleventh, touches base on sustainable cities and community. We do have a sustainable um, community here as well. We're quite lucky, and I love the fact that Dubai is kind of like on board with so many um, in terms of poverty, in terms of zero hunger, uh, quality education being provided. Um, as well as the 12 factor that is responsible consumption and production, we're kind of slowly and gradually moving towards it. Um, number 13 is climate action. I would highly recommend um, each one of you to uh, check out the documentary Before the Flood. That is an eye opener for each and every individual regarding climate change. What exactly can we do? Um, it's about taking those uh, little steps one by one into which we need to make a huge impact. And number 14 is life below water. We're talking about the marine life, how exactly it's been impacted by the excessive use of plastic. Uh, that's another issue that we can always touch base on. Number 15 is life on land. 16 is peace, justice, and strong institutes. And 17th is partnership for the goals, partnership. Um, I mean, in, uh, as a whole globally in terms of different countries coming together. Um, but even I feel like at a very basic initial level, we need to do partnerships, we need to do collaborations. For me, that's like the top agenda on sustainable narrative to build on a sense of community, to have networking and educating the people around you 
despite the fact they are running a sustainable business, but each and every day, it's so important to educate, to learn something new. And maybe you could, even after the session, go back and be like, oh, this is what I learned in the session. And I had no idea about that. And maybe I could incorporate it. You don't have to have a business, maybe incorporate it in your everyday life. I mean, it's about making those impact in the life of individuals every day or maybe you know not only in short run but always in the long run that's what we focus on so that's how i'm going to wrap up the entire presentation um so if you have any questions uh you can definitely write it in the chat below or you can ask them directly by switching on and muting yourself so I would be happy to answer. So do we have any questions uh, for Najia? I'll just wait for like half a minute. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so uh, thank you, Najia. I think um, the key takeaway um, from your um, workshop being that, you know, to, to run a business that um, it has um, more longevity is to sustainability and incorporating sustainability as a leg um, in your business um, is becoming extremely important today. And the idea is just making small shifts um, that go a long way, which is also the ethos of um, Shift Eco. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for uh, conducting this workshop for us. I think we have about, um, okay, we have about uh, one question, which says, what are the three actionable tips you have for a startup to be more sustainable? Well, we kind of touch base on the elements that startups need to uh, work around. That is firstly, uh, I would not list them as three because there are so many in terms of the concept building that you need to do. Uh, secondly, in terms of being able to educate the customer on the three factors that are people, profit and planet, they need to go side by side. Um, also, you know, if you're somebody who's in design or somebody who is in a, in a different industry, I think touching base on the fact that what exactly uh, you're true to in terms of your core value, uh, your business ideology, I think that could work so many wonders for you and being transparent about the entire process through and through and just work around sustainable marketing, not greenwashing uh, or green hushing. That's what we've done at a larger or bigger level out there. So I think, you know, being true to who you are as an individual, as well as the core eth ethos and the ideology of your brand, getting in touch with the customers, educating them on what you're doing. And last but not least, the product and services uh, sector that you're focusing into, what exactly um, are the key elements to it in terms of maybe you're making a, a, a sustainable product you can touch base on oh our product or organic this is the design process of the product these are the people who are involved in the entire product and that could work for the service sector in the same way as well great and we have another question from lara who says um in terms of educating customers on zero waste what has proved to be the best practice um, in your experience I think uh, when we touch base on circular design concept or theory as a whole, it's about coming up with zero waste techniques. But I think it sounds easy that it's done because you need to uh, come up with so many initiatives and campaigns, bring around those people, the customers and participants into it. I think the basic and the most easiest way that could be done firstly is to educate the people, have initiatives, have campaigns run around, not only here in Dubai, have international market uh, be a part of your initiative. And once the word it, uh, is out there, I mean, that could be, you know, the concept is out there. Now you have to work, maybe get in touch with, I know it is hard. 
and it's easier than it said but there's so many government initiatives working along those lines as well we've got environmental groups who are focusing on uh, cutting down on waste management and recycling waste and uh, also basically focusing on the zero waste concept as a whole and if you need more information, we work with businesses and uh, customers even and startups to just focus on circle design concept and how can you further. It's, a, it's just like sustainability, it's a different dimension that you can further tap into. It's just more, so much more to it, I feel like, that I could just explain it in a few sentences out there. So Lara asks another question. Um, do you believe rewarding them works to have them consistently practice these um, zero waste behaviors? It is just not about rewards. I mean, if you are somebody who wants to be a part of a sustainable community, it's something that you have to believe in and you're doing it out of, I mean, we've done, for example, this workshop, previously we do paid workshops and the unpaid ones, but we did a free workshop because we believe in what we are doing and shift equals sustainable narrative. They kind of come together for a certain um, initiative that is working towards sustainable development here in Dubai. So it's just more about initiative, it's more about making profit and you know working along those lines. Um, I, does anybody have any other questions? Okay, I think that's about it. And um, um, thank you so much, Najia, for doing this. And thank you so much for having me for today. Uh, the dialogue on how businesses can sort of start building the conversation of sustainability and uh, sustainable practices um, in their businesses. Um, thank you so much. And um, if anybody um, has wants to revisit um, this particular webinar, it will be available on our blog that is gone live today. Please be sure to check that out. Um, um, and a lot of our past workshops are there on it as well. And if anybody wants to write into Najia, um, I think Najia, if you could just um, yes, start your coordinate and um, you can be in touch. I'm thank you, thank my you. My personal as well as my business Instagram. So get in touch with me if you have more questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining in. Bye, take care. Take care. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.